Let the beat roll in. Let the beat roll in. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Come In This Podcast. It is our time for our weekly Thursday live stream. I'm your boy, Steve. I'm joined by my uh, fantastic co-host, Mr. Phil, Commuter Phil, Iron City Brewing. I am brewing in the Iron City tonight. <laughs> and uh, up in uh, Schittsburg. Over the yep. Yinzer, Yinzer town and uh oh dev welcome this is jordan 86 not sure i get the reference rookie year rookie season no no nah, that was his third year so the, that's, that's when right. the uh the, that's when the, the jordan ones came out eh, 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 eh. it's like dev froze up on us but yeah What's up, people in the chat? We got Yam. Good evening, fellow degenerates. Good evening, Yam in Japan, also in the Conus States. What's up, Jimmy Lee? Thank you for joining us. Deluxe, A.B. Johnson graphic. Yes, Brad Johnson was the thumbnail of this uh, podcast today. 14, 14 days left. We're two weeks away from the draft. Figure why not we, bring we, it in. We, we, with, uh, we will not, we will not tolerate any slander about brad johnson no we will not because you know what we we did uh we did him dirty and kind of kind of not fair to, to what we did i'm gonna i'm gonna level dev up here do, 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 do. level you up dev you good now oh, internet's going ham over here. yeah you good chris mcdaniel what's up chris mcd mickey d thanks for joining we appreciate you yeah shitsburg shitsburg ag what up what up, Earth Pod team? What is good with you, my friend, Mr. AG from YouTube? Thank you for joining. Too many days left. Yes, Brad Johnson was the thumbnail pick to this podcast today. Cheers to that. Cheers to Brad Johnson. Um, man, didn't have him long enough. <laughs> Should have had him longer. Definitely. Uh, I mean, the uh, the fact that we could have had a real contender with him at quarterback still burns me to this day oh yes still okay. burns me still still burns me. still burns me well real quick while we're at it we kind of wanted to start off we had a fun little accomplishment here and if you don't know you know we're we don't claim to be anything crazy we're just three dudes who loves this team and we like to get around and, and make the rounds and have fun while we're doing it and then lo and behold kind of out of left field We'd like to share with you guys someone who followed us on on the the old Twitter sphere. If I must, if I must say who, there you the go, Doctor Thugonomics, right there, there baby. Thugonomics, <laughs> d d d d d d d d. Now no, the, 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 the original basic th Thugonomics theme was better, but you know that's just my opinion. He raps on, he sings on it too, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's a, no, he he actually did a whole album. It was him and uh, his cousin's trademark. And yeah, if you were if you were into underground hip hop back in like the late nineties, early two thousands, trademark was in with guys like Seven L, Esoteric, and all those guys. So like Cena actually has had legit uh, connections with like legit lyricists, like guys you know guys who are like way deep in underground, like Sage Francis, guys like that. So. Uh, I always thought it was really cool that, uh, you know, two worlds of mine that never seemed to ever connect with John Cena actually came together. You know, when yeah. you're doing when you're doing tracks with guys like Freddie Fox, I mean, you know, you're obviously doing something with uh, guys who are well respected in the game. So, yeah, it, it was kind of random, kind of kind of cool. Um but yeah, John Cena follows Commander's Podcast on Twitter. He does follow a lot of people. If you do the ratio, 760,000 into 14.2 million, that ratio is, you know. One out of every 20. We're doing all right. We, we are doing oh. It's an affirmative okay. action follow. <laughs> for, for, for which one of us, though, Dev? Yeah, which one? <laughs> I mean, we all got a little bit of something in us. 
<laughs> oh man but yes we we really appreciate it john if you're probably not listening and watching but yes big up to you thank you for following we just thought we'd share that with you guys <laughs> um but let's get right into the show uh this won't be a super super long one no we go about 90 minutes or, or minimum uh we're gonna try to keep us a little bit shorter today uh because life you know we we have there's life and, and everyone's got different situations going on but um yes deluxe says his jersey with b johnson on always made me laugh a little bit that's right uh, he got wrong by serato he did along with lots of other people too i watched him get rock bottom the other day in wrestlemania that was pretty dope Bow. Are you talking about Cena? Yeah. Yeah. Undertaker, yes. Undertaker. We don't. We, yes. We would like to say John Cena is a Washington fan. I'll, I'll go ahead and take that claim like because he followed us. <laughs> yep. Yam yeah, says, uh, speaking of Gong Show, Shogun remake has been dope. And so is a new Fallout series. I'm on Shogun. episode four of Shogun. So I'm excited. Hey, X-Men, man. X-Men, X-Men 97 killed everything, though, bro. Today, the X-Men That's four, the last four, one. four shows in a row. Dev has propped hey, up X-Men 97. You, so. X-Men 97, the last episode that popped out yesterday, <laughs> is the best thing Marvel has done, bro. I'm yep. not joking. It fucked you up, dog. Watch it. Really? Watch Everyone, it. I mean. Watch it. I will. The it's long, the 27 minutes long, man, on, the, on uh, Disney Plus, man. It's on the to-do list. It's on the to-do list. It's on the to-do list. Uh, Thomas Millen from YouTube, thank you for joining in. Thomas, is draft getting close? And to be honest, I'm not sweating my bet. I just don't want to see how. I mean, May in Washington. Come on, Thomas. It ain't, it ain't that bad. I don't think he'll be that bad. But we'll see. We'll, we'll see. I, no I've more. just noticed a weird crossover between Heineke Hive and the the, the Jaden Jackers. I, I don't understand. Jaden Jackers. That was my Jackers. command. This hat I got a while ago. So uh, it worn a while. Jaden Jackers and uh, the Heineke Hive. Like uh, there's a weird Jaden Jackers. There's, there's, Heineke Hive. There's a weird. <laughs> correlation between the two like like a lot of people who i can look back and they're like they were huge fans of taylor are huge jane daniels fans i want to know i'm just i'm curious as to why there is such a correlation between the two i don't know i do not know jd hive though Jaden yeah. jackers, I don't know. funny Jaden jackers <laughs> We'll have to log that one, the Jaden Jackers. Uh, yeah, says, I'm going to say new merch, Steve. Nah, just a custom hat I, I got made a long time ago. We haven't dabbled into the merch merch uh, arena yet, but in due time, don't worry. Yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't ask for super chats. We don't ask for donos. We don't have a merch store. I mean, you know, it, y'all if you... please give us the super chats. I'm broke. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, 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 we're all cool. I mean. We don't we don't sit there and and ask for them or only read we'll donos and, and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look your Virginia card your Virginia Cardinal card is good with us. We take, we take yeah. a snap if you look. If, you almost, if y'all got wick, we can use juicy juice. And then... Oh man. <laughs> You tell Steve, Steve didn't laugh. He ain't never date no problem. No, I feel like my, my audio is messed up here. Okay, it's weird. It's just only coming out of one ear. I don't know. Steve, what Steve do. don't know what Wick is, man. He's privileged. Wick, snap, come on. <laughs> Jesus, DM. I don't know. I can't. Oh, well. All right. Man, Let's Yam, proceed. Yam, was, Yam wasn't in the scenario. Sun, uh, scenario. The uh, tsunami, uh, Marcus. He wasn't in the earthquake, bro. He was already back in the good old U.S. of A. Man, All I know is that Yam wants command this nipple pasties. All I know is the Knicks are beating the uh, Boston sixty nine forty eight. Damn, uh, we need no to get we, we we need we need to just like just go straight to like the old you know Twitch streaming style. Just have like everybody's chat mm. going up down the corner. So when I call out a chat, everybody knows what I'm talking about. I just, scrolling, just scrolling, just so scrolling, just like to see you know Yam wants you know nipple pasties with our logo yeah. on it. And, Thomas says, "Mark my words, he'll be that bad." If you liked how you just don't, you just don't like May. Wait, I don't, I, I, I don't understand that one because if you're comparing saying how is May, then wouldn't I like May yeah, if I like how? It depends. I don't know. We're gonna keep talking about it though for, for one more week, and then after that, yeah. game on, game on, 
Yes, yes, yes. What's up, Marcus? Marcus Edlin, uh, hardest working man on Facebook. Make sure you go check out Sports View 2, sharing all the good Washington content. Two weeks until draft kicks off. We hyped, I believe. This is Mark Serafin. What's up, Mark? Thank you for joining us. Either flip over to YouTube. I put the link at the top of the post or give StreamYard permission to have your name also at the top of that same um, fake Facebook yeah. post. So we I'm can, on my uh, phone, guys. I can't go read Facebook and, <laughs> so and we can translate who's who. Get you credit instead of being Facebook user. You can be who you are. We can give you credit and then salute you as you as you do so. Um, would love to go to the draft, man. One of these years, we gotta we gotta all link up at the draft. That that would be how we plan this better, man. That would have been epic meeting Detroit, dude. Oh my goodness, that'd have been sick. That would have been. Sick. Uh, Mark Serafin also says, need Ben Sanat with one of those third round picks. Ben Sanat, oh my gosh. Would be nasty. Would be totally nasty. All right, let's talk about the top 30 visits here. So there's been a lot of visits coming through to Washington. They call it the top 30. Don't call it the top 30. I call it a top 30. Don't call it top 30. Has nothing to do with being top of anything. It is a fallacy. A lot of people are actually <laughs> pissed off. They call it top 30. It's literally just visits okay it's just visits it's not like only the top 30 people get to go they, they just don't ask me why teams are able to host 30 players for normal visits that's yeah, that's what get, it is you know they get they get to go to you know the four-star restaurants with the team instead of the five-star restaurants yeah. or they you know and since some guys cases they may get some five guys you know with, you know with, with, with the coaching staff that's about it yeah yeah. And you, and you have your formals and your informals. And what I want to talk about now is just here are the formal visits that they either have completed or have scheduled. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to show these to you because it would take forever. But um, offensive tackle from Yale, uh, Kieran Amigdaje, Austin Booker, edge from Kansas, Jaden Daniels coming up on Monday. Uh, Rob, Rob Gaddison, cornerback, Western Carolina, Cam Hart, who I think we've all, we, I think we all might've mocked him in one of our drafts, cornerback, Notre Dame, Javante, Jean Baptiste, defensive end from Notre Dame, Elijah Jones, cornerback from Boston, Marshawn Nealon, Western Michigan, edge rusher, Ch uh, Tyrese Knight, linebacker, UTEP. If you remember Tim Hardaway, the UTEP two-step, mm. Drake May, quarterback, North Carolina on Monday. J.J. McCarthy from quarterback of Michigan, also scheduled for a top 30. Jordan Morgan, who a lot of us, actually almost everyone on Commander Twitter has the team trading back in to the 16th or 17th pick to get them some Jordan Morgan offensive tackle out of Arizona. Michael Penix, Washington, another top 30. Chop Robinson, who we are high. I know Phil is very high on Chop Robinson, edge rusher, Penn State. Roger Rosengarden, offensive tackle, Washington, who's gaining a lot of traction out on social media. Jatavian Sanders, who I think we all like, tight end out of Texas. Caden Wallace, offensive tackle, Penn State. They love Penn State. Wow. I'm telling you, Penn State can re will recruit the greatest recruiting classes. And, and, and Franklin's great at that, but he is a horrible game management coach, like in-game decisions. He, he Something does not connect. Yeah, and, you know he, he'll he'll waste a lot of talent. That he just I never liked the quarterbacks he gets. Yeah, um, I'm gonna share the screen here very quickly. We'll just continue to go down the list. Uh, we're a little bit uh, on the wrong side here. Maybe we can slide this over here. There we go, and I will zoom in. All right, so quarterbacks uh, they do have a private workout schedule for JJ McCarthy also. So oh boy. Oh uh, they're boy. they have met with a shit ton of quarterbacks. I could read them all to you. It's quite a bit. Carter Bradley, Ben Bryant, Jaden Daniels, Theo Day, Darren Granger, Sam Hartman, looking like Keanu Reeves in his 40, Michael Ayers, Devin Leary, Ricky Rocky Lombardi, Drake May, JJ McCarthy, Joe Milton um, at his pro day. They had uh in combine and at the senior bowl, Bo Nix. Senior Bowl, Combine, and Pro Day. Michael Penix, Senior Bowl, Combine, Pro Day, Top 30 visit. He's coming to Ashburn. Michael Penix is coming to Ashburn. Davius Richard, uh, John Rice Plumley, Jack Plummer, Michael Pratt, Spencer Rattler, 
Team Pro Day Senior Bowl Combine, Austin Reed, Kendon Slovis from BYU, Colby Sweets, Tua Atalia Tagovailoa. Uh, Team Pro Day, and they had a local Pro Day, if you'd missed that last week. Uh, Jordan Travis, Florida State, Gunnar Watson, and Caleb Williams, NFL Combine meeting and a Team Pro Day. No top 30 scheduled for him. And I think we all probably know why. He ain't coming. He ain't he not coming to to uh the the sheer number of quarterbacks they're looking at tells you they're really that's insane i mean it, it's due diligence really like it. doing their due diligence i like it i like it a lot i like it a lot um, i like it a lot <laughs> thomas midland says i want to be clear i won't like it but i will 100 percent back whoever we pick second that that's it thomas that 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 is the mentality that i think we all we can get in our we can get in our corners pre-draft but once the dude is drafted Let's get it, man. Let's let's. There's no reason to be. I'm leaving the team, or you know, fuck that dude, or whatever. Thank you. It's I really, really I really, unless they just completely botch it. Yeah, like Spencer I'll Rattler or something. Spencer Rattler. Yeah. <laughs> they, go Joe they, 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 they go Joe. They go Joe Milton second. I, yeah, I know a lot of people like Joe Milton, but he is not a number two. Yam so. is anti JD five. I think we've established that. He well, hates Penn State because of being a Big Ten guy, but he respects them. He loves their home field entrance. Uh, yeah, Amir yeah. Bahalu, ba- sorry, Amir says, what's up, guys? Hail, I got to say I'm you looking forward to the draft, but thanks to one cancerous person, I really can't wait for this draft to be over with. You guys have been amazing. Thank you, Amir. We appreciate you. Thank you much. Gee, bro. We, we, I wonder who <laughs> We will be about. live uh, next Thursday for the draft, and we will have – a special guest to see, you know, to, to, so we can see live reactions. Um, big, pe- big Phoenix <laughs> <Yep>. energy. <laughs> Michael Underwood. What's up, Michael? Thank you for joining us. I'll call you Mike there. Uh, facts, facts, facts. Hog on the mountain. What's up? Col- Cody, uh, Cody, Cody Jones. Fellas I actually caught you all live tonight. Dev looked like he's about to step into the ring. Dev's been going 12 rounds with uh, influenza. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he is a he is he is he is a influenza. He's a he's a light he's a lightweight from uh, Mexico. Yeah. I'm gonna say he just left San Fran with the Super Bowl quarterback the last week in the draft. We got a Trump Peter. That's true, bro. But how much influence did Adam Peters have in getting Brock Purdy? Was that a John Lynch call? We don't know what we do. Know. They also won the fifth round. If that had picked, drop, drop, if that had picked Purdy in the first round, they would have ape shit in the same round. Yeah, but what we also know is that Adam Peters was a scout. He's a homegrown scout. Okay, mm-hmm. he spent his time on the road. He's not just a guy who who rose up through the ranks. He's a bona fide scout. So that's why I I truly trust him more than some of these people who've just been executives or players who rose up to the ranks. Adam Peters is a scout, dude. Got to trust it. Got to trust it. Also, one of the ones that was on the on the uh, <clears throat> on the record for wanting to trade up to get uh, your boy. They ended up trading this to the Cowboys. What's his face? He used to be there. Amari. Nah, the quarterback sent for him. Jimmy G. Nah, the one they traded to Cowboys. The one they to the Cowboys. The picks for man, and he didn't work out. I don't remember. Uh, Trey Lance. Lance. Trey Lance. Yeah, Trey Lance. Trey Lance. Yeah, Trey, Trey Lance. We don't. We don't. I, once again, it hasn't been publicized. Who was the true was behind Trey Lance? Was it Adam? Was it was it John Lynch? Yeah. I don't know. Michael Underwood believes we may pick up some more picks and trade back. The mature thing to do. Anything. Anything's possible. That's Not the beauty of this draft. But the the thing that I would like is the. Uh, it would be nice if we just draft a second, only because it means that I won't have to be up until the end of the set, first round. <laughs> Um, <laughs> wondering what's going on, you know. I can just, I could just be pick our number two, and I can just get drunk the rest of the night and then yeah. maybe crash out. I just early. need to go ahead and call in Friday. That Friday, I need to do that right now. I just need to do it. <laughs> get over with. Um, Tia, what's up, Tia? I said, hey, fellas, and everyone on the podcast. Thank you for joining there, Miss Tia. We, we we always appreciate you. Deluxe says the quarterback of Washington will have the weight on his soldiers, time support, wherever they pick. Yeah, man. You are going to be the savior, whoever you're going to be. Like, we legit need a hero. Like the song, I Need a Hero. Yeah, that's we what need we a need. Hero. Yes, we holding on to a hero to the end of the night. That's right. You know what movie made that song famous? Flash Dance. Shrek. Ah, another one. 
Short, short, short circuit two. Yeah. <laughs> At the you very could. end, where he where he jumped on the back of uh, uh number five Johnny Five, and he's trying to catch uh, the bad dude. I forget what his name was, but yes, yes. Johnny Five is alive. Great movie, like, like, short circuit. Doing it, right? doing it. <laughs> they are, and and you know, Dev rocked my world when he told me the Indian dude. In yeah, he was Fisher Stevens. Was and Fisher I told Stevens. you and I told you I remember I told you I was like he was the bad guy he was the bad guy in hackers. And Steve, y'all, this is oh one of the best my God. post pod reactions. Steve, like you would have thought we told him that Santa Claus didn't exist. And the way that Steve reacted when I told him was like, Yeah, he's I the guy who he was the, the bad guy in hackers. Sure too was Fisher Stevens, white oh, as can be. God. Loved it. Love great movie. Great movie. Uh, Michael Underwood also trusts Adam Peters. That's right. Greg Delaney from Facebook. Thanks for tuning in, Greg. We appreciate you. Uh, as always, uh, anything is possible. That's right. Marcus says, I don't know what's bigger, WrestleMania or Jane Dan's reaction on Command This Podcast on Draft Night. And you know what? Tune in. Just tune in is going to be fun either way. Uh, let's get to some of these wide receivers from the pro days. Uh, so just, I'm just going to go down the list. Probably not going to read all of them because there's a lot of visits coming up. I'll just really talk about the ones that are you know, significant. I'll let you guys read them for the audio crowd. I'm sorry. You got to go catch this one on the video. Um, they met with Josh Cephas, uh, Texas, uh, wide receiver, Texas, San Antonio, Hula Bowl meeting, East West Shrine meeting, uh, Jaden Coker, a Holy Cross, Hula Bowl, East West Shrine Bowl, NFL Combine Pro Day and local Pro Day. Look at that. Keon Coleman and went to his Pro Day. Malachi Corey, Western Kentucky. Senior Bowl Combine Team Pro Day. Look at that. Marvin Harrison Jr., of course. Let's see who else. Xavier Leggett, who a lot of us like, wide receiver South Carolina. He'd be a nice swap. They, they could pick him up. Uh, met with him at the Combine and at the Team Pro Day. Luke McCaffrey, wide receiver out of Rice. Met I like him at the L- I like both of the LMAX. I like both of the LMAX at receiver. I think they're going to be good. Uh, uh, and right below him, picks. there you go, Lad McConkey, just like Phil was saying, Lad McConkey, wide receiver, Georgia, met him at the uh, Senior Bowl, uh, the Combine, and Team Pro Day. Adonai Mitchell, who a lot of us like as well, we've been seeing a lot of mocks. Texas, met him at the Combine, Team Pro Day. Malik Neighbors at the Combine, Roma Duns, Aduns from wide receiver, Washington, and uh, Tajon Palmer, Ricky Pearsall, wide receiver, Florida. Jalen Polk, wide receiver, Washington. Brendan Rice, USC. I think that's the s- – who is he, the Jerry Rice? Son, nephew? Sorry, I don't know. Sorry. Yeah. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Brian Thomas, wide receiver, LSU. NFL Combine, Team Pro Day. Devontae Walker, wide receiver, North Carolina. Drake Mays, teammate. Uh, Team Pro Day, Senior Bowl, NFL Combine. Xavier Worthy, we talked about him already. So, yeah, that's the wide receivers. Uh, tight ends, Jaheim Bell, who I believe Marcus, Marcus, I believe you were really big on Jaheim Bell from Florida State a long time ago. Correct me if I'm wrong. Tight end, right? Tight end, Jaheim Bell. I think, I think Marcus is really high on Jaheim Bell. Uh, Brock Bowers, of course. I think T is really high on Brock Bowers. Brock. Who else? Who else? I'm Steve? big on Brock Bowers. If yeah. we were to do a trade, if we were to do a trade back and get have two picks in the first round, I wouldn't mind Brock Bowers and you get like Michael Penix. You yeah. got you got a, a, an all world tight end for him to throw to in the um in in, in, in a uh, Cliff Kingsbury offense. I think yeah. that'd be a great combination. So Yam and Amir corrected me. It was in Footloose first, which is a great movie. I watched that the other day. Kevin Bacon. Footloose. I meant Footloose when I said Flashdance. Oh, okay. I was like, I don't know about Flashdance, but I let it ride. Footloose. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Footloose. Footloose first. Short circuit number five. Yeah, we're a little behind on the uh, on the comments here, but we're going to keep going. Short circuit, Johnny Five alive. Uh, let's Your mama see. Mama was a snowblower. Remember that one. Jatavian Sanders. I said he has a top thirty visit. Ben Sanat does not have a top thirty visit. Uh, they met him at the Senior Bowl Combine and Pro Day. Cade Stover also, who a lot of us mock. I think I had him in a couple mocks. No, no top thirty visit. Just uh, Jatavian Sanders, running backs. Did- so no Theo Johnson, huh? No Theo Johnson. I don't I think I saw Theo Johnson. That's, that's a oh, no, there he is. There Theo he Johnson, is. Senior Bowl, Combine, and Team Pro Day. 
Yeah, they, they sent, they sent some people out there. That's that's the thing you gotta look at is that if you see multiple visits like that, there's yeah. a, there's an interest. They think that they can get them. Um, not as you know, and you gotta think they gotta think they can get them in the round they project them. That's why, like right. for instance, Malik Neighbors has just the combine visit. They don't think they're gonna get Malik Neighbors. Not with all the other guys they're targeting. Not the fact that wide receiver is just not their primary concern right now. So yeah. this, these are things when you guys look at these lists. Don't just look at who they met with. Look at where and how many times. And they met with Theo Johnson three times. There's an interest. Right. Uh, Chris McDane says, if Mario ends up starting, yeah. How upset would you guys be if they tried to Mario it out week one, regardless of who they draft? Regardless of who they draft, Jaden, JJ, Drake, people would be pissed, man. Can they really do that? Trot out Mariota week one. No, nah, man. I mean, I, I mean, I it, keep fans. Can they do that? Can they do that? Sure. I don't think it's that bad. I don't. Uh, unpopular opinion. Well, I'm looking long term, but people would be pissed. Well, catastrophic to the fan base. You tried out that dude Mariota first day. Catastrophic, bro. People would be pissed. Ooh. That would be the so collective mad. response to the fan base. Yeah. Uh, Michael says we should get the receiver from the Bengals pairing with Terry. You talking about T. T. Higgins? Wasn't T. Higgins a free agent? I don't know if he still is. Maybe talking about T. Free T. Higgins. I think he is coming up on a free agency year because he, was, he wasn't a first round pick, was he? T. Higgins? He was no. A second rounder. He, was he was not. He was a second rounder. Um, yeah, I'm so surprised we didn't play for Ayuk. The Ayuk thing might still be in trade play, man. You never know. It, 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 this has been a crazy all season with traded players and draft picks. So this might be a crazy, crazy, crazy draft. Oh, T. Higgins requested a trade. Yeah. Tommy, what's up, Tommy? Ooh. Thanks for joining us. The BYU tight end. Who are you talking about? BYU for BYU. Did we already talk about him? Uh, you skipped the best. You skipped the. You, you, oh, the Isaac down. Rex. Isaac Rex, right there. Isaac Rex, it's tight end. Name. BYU. Like Simon Rex. That's, you put a re- put Rex on a, on, a, on a jersey, it might sell. Yeah. Yeah, Michael says Brock will be gone by the fifteenth pick. I think he will too. Deluxe says, for Star Wars fans, a great YouTube of Luke Mandalorian scene set to I Need a Hero. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Tommy, you said Wiley. I like. Oh, okay. thought you meant our uh, Andrew Wiley. It <laughs> took me a second to, for that to kick in. All right. Uh, let's go through running backs here for a second. Um, Braden Allen, Trey Benson, Florida State. Blake Corum, uh, running Three back. Three meetings Michigan. with Amani Bet. Oh. Three meetings to the mommy Ben uh, Bailey. That's Senior Bowl Combine Team Pro Day. There you go. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, Blake Corum, only two meetings, Combine and Pro Day. Ray Davis, running back Kentucky, Senior Bowl Team Pro Day. Who else? Who else? Who running back Dejan, three uh, meetings with Dejan Isaac, Edwards. Isaac Gorendo. That dude is yep. that Isaac, like a, Isaac Gorendo. I, I mocked dude, him. That dude runs like mine. that really runs barely like Low uh, four threes, like four three ones and four two nines and shit. Damn, super fast, man. Like Isaac Rendo. Yeah, George yeah. Lani that's has. That's just gonna be important now that the uh, kickoffs are gonna all be ran back. Yeah, so, see, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these guys who are lower round picks, look at look at Gorendo's a mid round guy. Frank yep. Gore's gonna be a low round pick. George Lani's probably gonna be a lower round pick. I think Gorendo four meet four round. meetings, four meetings with Halani. Yeah. They must like him. Oh, they must like they him. must like him. And it, it's kind of different when you look visually look at it, Phil, like in perspective. Yes, I, you could read the list, but when you see it, meeting, 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 that kind of like that, that kind of maths, right? The math is mm-hmm. mathing. The same with Jacoby uh, Cabote from Louisiana. Four four meetings. Dylan Lobb, running back New Hampshire. I didn't even know New Hampshire out of college. Three meetings. Marshawn Lloyd, running back Southern Cal, Senior Bowl Combine Team Pro Day. Any relation to uh no, no, never mind. Never mind. I know what you're thinking. You know, Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> I was like, Brandon he's, he's an Oakland guy. I'm Brandon like, yeah, Brandon Lloyd. Yeah, my brain was wasn't working too well. Uh, Will Shipley, Clemson, two meetings. Yeah, Will Shipley's dope. I like. like yeah. I said he's one of those guys that if you can catch. Will Shipley also will play receiver probably. But yeah. Will Shipley is one of those guys, man, that also 
<laughs> if you catch him five or six round and you know you're gonna he could start right away at kick return, man. And right. the new kick return rules, man, Will Shipley is an asset. And like I said, he's probably gonna play receiver. He's not probably gonna play running back. Yeah. Yep. Tommy says if Mariota starts, we can go in, we going to be a run and D team. Yes. AG says Yoda will be a major buzzkill. Uh, Amir with the with the with the uh, assist, T. Higgins requested a trade. Nobody cares right. about T. Higgins. But like I said, like I said, who's better, T. Higgins or uh, or or McLaurin? Terry McLaurin. McLaurin. You think so? Yeah, but he yeah. also one also had Joe got, Burrow, and the other one had. They're going to pay, they're gonna pay him the same thing. So yeah, you got to pay him like twenty three to twenty five million dollars, man. I want y'all to think. About that's only that. because it's only it's only because it's two years later. I'm just saying. McLaurin, you think, you McLaurin think we get 27 right now. You think, you think, yeah. You think it'd be worth paying two receivers almost $50 million now that aren't really good? I mean, they aren't really great. They're just good. Like I said, man, y'all good with getting Chrysler 300s. Chrysler 300s. 300. You get them, dog. <laughs> hey, get hey, hey, hey. I'm going to get hey, y'all a Honda, I, uh, a Nissan Stratus. I love Stratus, me. Right. Y'all, dude, y'all I, 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 I love me a 300. Oh, team. Michael. Put that, Michael, put that Michael, in there. Michael, Tyler y'all, Boyd. Y'all, y'all get an SRT. T Higgins, I don't know. I y'all can't. Want an SRT? That's what y'all want to get. Y'all get that guy. Hey, any Burrow throwing to anyone produced? Let's put it that way. Tyler Boyd. Browning team. throwing to anyone produced. Who? Browning, the dude that replaced Lloyd. I mean, Lloyd, the guy who replaced the. Uh, yeah, it's true. Boyd. That actually makes the receiver seat ups the receiver's value. Right. That Jake Browning looked looked all. Browning looked. Browning probably would have been an all star if he played the whole season. Yeah. I mean, keep it real. He was yeah, better said, than Al. Did I see y'all see that Marcus Ware was just asked to be on Mass Singer? He was really dang good. I did not. I uh, don't watch shows like that. I, yeah, I prefer I to keep my IQ points. Thomas First, says, I'm probably about to lose y'all, fellas. TV, Winds man, and rain picking up hard where I'm at. Jaden, the future Daniels. You are not alone. Welcome to the chat. Todd Samuel says, Jaden Daniels coming to mm-hmm. Ash Burns. Russ and I heard doing nasty work on them Celtics, bro. Hope none of y'all Celtics fans because ha 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 ha. Go Knicks. Brunson doing dirty work to them, dirty work to them dudes, bro. Yeah, thirty six points, third period. Yep, and dirty the fights work. have started in the chat already. <laughs> the, the, gang, <laughs> the gang fights have started. So y'all oh, Todd just is there. Hey, Todd. Keep, keep the up, keep buddy? the uh, keep the gloves up. Let's have a clean fight. Oh, again. And uh, when I say when I say break break and go to your corner, go to your corner. There you go. So have at it. <laughs> Jaden uh, Yam says, Jaden, the future when he gets knocked out and our backups cause us to draft another quarterback again. Daniels, Todd says, Drake May will sit on the bench in New England behind Brissett. <laughs> uh, Tommy said, Cliff also worked with Lloyd last year. Okay. Amir said, Lord Voldemort is on here. Who read the Necro Necromicron and summoned <laughs> Necronomicon. <laughs> Necronomicon, Man, sorry. Necro. Hold on, Steve, ne- Steve, Necro- have you never watched Necro- Evil Dead? No, never. Zero. Not that the video game? No, it's a, it's a, it, there'd be a series of movies, and then there was a TV show on Stars a couple of years ago. I have ago. not. I have that's not. With Bruce Campbell, he not plays Ash. He's got, not, yeah, he, that's a video game. Evil Dead, they're in a mall and shit. Well, they made a video game out of it, but it was originally a, a series of movies, Army of Darkness. Yeah. Yo, come on. I, I'm I have the not. Only one. I, I have it. not. I know the video game. I'm going to get through. It's, it's how, it's, okay, it's how Sam Raimi got his start with those movies. Those are the first okay. movies he directed. So if you liked Spider Man, you can thank Evil Dead. They have a dance scene in it. Like all of what? Movies? Well, they got tons of them, but it's all about he. They open the Nef- Necronomicon, the Book of the Dead, okay. and it's it's dark comedy. It's a, it's a horror movie with a lot of dark comedy, in it. and and it's over the top. It's really you good. What, uh, it's it's, it's not, a classic. You know what? It's not. X-Men what? 97. Y'all need to watch that shit. Uh, there, he <laughs> goes. there he goes. Yev says Evil Dead is my jam, Phil. Hey, hey, hey. I got to I got to meet Data De Lorenzo, who was on Ash vs. the Evil Dead. And let me tell you something. That girl is a petite little hot Italian and was tons of fun to talk to. So. All right, I'm going to breeze through the rest of this list here. They're meeting with a shit ton of offensive linemen. I'm not going to go down. All the big names, all the little names. Basically, re- uh, meeting with everyone here. Um, this is going to take forever for me to get to this whole list, so I'm just going to keep going. Um, meeting with all the all the offensive centers. Who was the, the, the lineman? There's a lineman up there with a the top 30 meeting. Who was that? 
Oh, it's uh, uh, Kieran uh, Amigaje from Yale. Yeah, we'll we'll look at the guys. Uh, Ayadis Gottlieb, uh, Maryland had four four meetings, including the local pro day. Uh, Carson Barnhart from Michigan, uh, four meetings. Who else had four meetings here? Anim Dankwa from Howard, four meetings, including the local pro day. The local pro days are press for, for a lot of these guys. Troy Fatanu, Washington Pro Day Combine. Uh, Fashanu, Penn State, same thing, Combine Team Pro Day. Um, Talise Fuaga, Oregon State, three meetings. Senior Bowl Combine Pro Day. And Tyler Guyton, who we like at Oklahoma Senior Bowl Combine Team Pro Day. Uh, who else? Who else? Christian Jones, Texas Senior Bowl Combine Team Pro Day. Anyone else have four? Let's see, Matt Lee from uh, Miami has three. Casey Leviston. Casey Leviston had three meetings. Oh, um, Limmer had three meetings. Um, let's, see. let's see. A lot of guys with three meetings. Jordan Morgan. You just passed him. Jordan Morgan had four, One, four meetings. Two, three. Yeah, there you go. Meetings. Senior Bowl Combine Team Pro Meeting Top Thirty. See, Greg Delaney says that multi meetings doesn't mean they're interested. In he says guys are going to be available. Yes, but there's multiple guys who can be available at a certain pick. You're going to meet the most of the guy you're most interested in. Yep, Rosengarden. We talked about him. Top thirty four meetings. Who else? Who else? Caden Wallace, Penn State East West Shrine Combine Team Pro Day Top Thirty. Another Penn State guy. Uh, let's get through the defensive uh, guys here real quick. Nobody, everyone has two meetings, three meetings. Uh, Cooper Dijon, two meetings. Like him a lot. Uh, Javars Brownlee, cornerback, Louisville, three meetings. Uh, Johnny Dixon, three meetings. Willie Drew, three meetings. Another cornerback from Louisville, Storm Duck. We should get him just off that name alone, man. What a name. Storm Duck? <laughs> Storm Duck. All right, duck. on. Deb, Storm this, is your, duck. this is your college. Deb, this is your college. This is Louisville. Tell us about Storm Duck. No idea. No idea. <laughs> Rod Gaddison, Western Carolina, ask, top 30 ask, visit. Uh, ask Marcus, man. I have no idea. <laughs> Cam Hart, cornerback Notre Dame, top 30 visit. Kyrie Jackson, three meetings. Oh, Cam, Cam Hart said four meetings. <laughs> yep. Senior Bowl Combine Team Pro, top 30, four meetings for him. Elijah Jones, four meetings. Senior Bowl Combine Pro Day, top 30. Kalen King, three meetings for Penn State. I'll yeah, tell you, I, Penn State put together a roster. They did. Can't can't win shit. Uh, safeties. Anyone have a top thirty meeting for safeties here? Looks like. All right. No. So Marcus D. Mm. says Storm says Storm Duck is more of a slot defensive back. Okay. Extra. So body. he's like, is he like a uh, is he like a honey badger type? You know, just just somebody who just mixes a tween- up on tweener. the side. Yeah. Sue Cravens. Tyrese Knight has a top thirty visit linebacker out of UTEP. Talked about that. No, 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 no. Honey Badger was not, wasn't safe. He, he was always more like a slot corner. He was a guy who just. He was a tweener. Just thing, well, he never played safety, though. No, you're right. He was either cor- he was a corner or he was kind of in the box. You're right. Yeah. Trevin Wallace, guy. linebacker, Kentucky. He's got four meetings lined up as well. Defensive line. Uh, Austin Booker, edge. We already talked about these guys. Okay. I think we've done enough about the, the top 30 meetings, guys. Um, let's get back, back on track here. So, um, let's get some of these comments. Tim Calloway. Thanks for joining in. Tim says Drake may is coming. There we go. Sam, how new number is six pick six. <laughs> you know, Ty, we're going to watch, we're going to watch Sam how very closely this year. Cause I tell you, he's going to be starting before the year's over. It's, it's coming. My, pro- my, my thing is like the dude's not even on the team anymore and he can't keep Sam Howell's name out. But I haven't talked about Sam Howell since he left the team other than, when it gets brought in conversation, and I, and I say he will be starting by the end of the year. He, yeah. he will take um, – what's his name's job? Geno Smith's job. Hopefully, I don't think Geno Smith is that good. Rent-free. Don't let him live rent-free in your head. Don't let him live rent-free in your head, uh, Todd. Just Todd, Todd, Todd that, will be joining us for those listening. Todd will be joining us at live uh, draft night, so stay tuned. Uh, Deuce, what's up, Deuce from Red Zone Labs? What's up, guys? We're talking about quarterbacks. we talking about everything. Not really. Just got done with the visits. We're talking quarterbacks now. Uh, what I do want to show here is a... Ba-bam. 
This is what Albert Breer says about Drake May. So just give me a thumbs up that you guys can hear this. I know who all of them have as the number two quarterbacks. Hold on one second. All right, here you go. Who I have. I'd like to know who is the number two Good. quarterback on your board, and I want to see if we agree or disagree. Can you hear it? Yes. Okay. Um, I've gone back and forth on this a little. This is Albert Breer. I just think in this environment right now, um, especially if you're in the AFC, you almost have to swing for the fences. And my biggest fear is the quarterback that you're okay with the first couple of years, and then you're looking to replace him for four or five years. It's like the Jared Goff thing, you know? And Goff's a really good quarterback, and he's led two different teams to conference title games. But eventually the Rams got to the point where it's like, we need someone to put us over the top, you know? And I like look at the landscape of the AFC. If you're one of these teams in the AFC – looking at quarterbacks and you know, you've got a bunch of NFC teams that are in that market now, but the Patriots are in the AFC is Jaden Daniels, Drake may JJ McCarthy. Are they going to be enough to eventually get you behind that little velvet rope and into the club Ooh. that the Bengals are in, Good that analogy. the chiefs are in, that the chargers are in, that the Ravens are in, that the bills are in, right? Are, are they going to be good enough to eventually have that bouncer lift the velvet velvet rope and let you in the club? And like, I just look at Drake and I'm like, that's the one. Oof. That's the one. He said it, not me. <laughs> he said it, not me. Uh, Michael All says, right, so we're balling out. Let's get to the comments while, you know, Todd Samuels shits an egg roll. Yes. AG says, and House Park 2.0. Not bad. I'd take it. I mean, yeah, Harv far, far threw a lot of picks, but he won a lot of games. Gunslinger mentality. Yeah. Gunslinger mentality. While we're while we're on the Drake May train, I'm just gonna keep keep piling it on here because I have another another little video to to pile on here um, with Drake May. Here we go. This is Rick Spielman. If you remember Rick Spielman, Rick Spielman was the original guy that Adam, or excuse me, that Josh Harris brought in to help find the GM search. It was Rick Spielman, uh, former GM of the Detroit Lions, and someone else from the basketball circuit. But this is who Rick Spielman thinks will be the commander's first round pick. Ready? I got a text that said, "You're crazy if you think Jaden's going before Drake." What, what is your response? Right? He said, "You're." He got a text saying, "You're crazy if you think Jaden's going before Drake." Rick, what do you think about that? If you couldn't hear it, during this pro day, I got that. Back. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's just what I said, didn't I? Yeah, momentarily, but you flip flopped. I'm not sure. Are you still on that? No, I just. It's said, not crazy to say that. No, to go I, I, I do believe that Drake will go for it. Okay. We watch him back. Okay. Uh, here's the other. I got a text that said. So he said it. He said he do believe Drake. Drake's gonna go. Um, Todd said he's not listening to Albert Breer. He doesn't know. Well, damn, Todd. Well, what about what if I show you this next clip of Albert Breer saying that the commanders are going to take Jaden Daniels? That, what does that do to your brain? If you're not going to listen to Albert Breer, but I'm about to show you a tweet where Albert Breer is saying the commander should take Jaden Daniels. So I, I'm kind of confused. Do we like Albert Breer or do we not like Albert Breer? I'll let you be the judge. <laughs> Team is drafting a quarterback based on their offensive coordinator. Like, come on, the guy that could be gone in. Albert years. Breer. I, I, I'm, I'm just calling. BS. Yeah, I, I don't, don't think it's just that. Though. Right I don't think it's oh. just Cliff, though. Oh, like, I think it's also like James Quinn. And like, you know, I think for a defensive head coach, and you always hear this, is that the defensive head coach is usually going to go for the guy that's most difficult to defend. And yeah. you know, that's just sort of so. That's a good point. And ob objectivity aside, Albert, what Albert Breer is trying to say is, as a defensive coach. Who keeps you up at night? And that's who maybe that's who Dan Quinn would probably prefer. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it makes sense. All right, well, let's, we, we'll uh, sort of like take into their DNA. It's you know who was who's going to keep me at the facility late on a Wednesday, trying to game plan, right? And like I think Jaden Daniels is that guy. I think if you're Dan Quinn, like, and this isn't like, you know, I, I think we all know for, for, for various reasons, he fits what Cliff's wanted in a quarterback traditionally, but for Dan Quinn, like part of it is who is going to give me the most trouble? Like if this guy is on another team, who is going to be the biggest problem? Yeah. And because of what Jaden Daniels can do in the run game 
and this is the way it is for a lot of defensive coordinators, having to deal with like that math problem that a running quarterback gives you. It's true. On top of the fact that he's like a pretty high level passer too. You know, if you're Dan, you like look at it, you say, oh, okay, like now tough. I'm putting this together for the run game and I've got to, you know, deal with this off of the run game in the passing game. And, you know, it's like that's part of it too, is having a defensive head coach can impact that and that it goes beyond just how good a player is, hmm. how good a player he is. It goes. All right. Not going to keep sharing that. So you, you get, you get the point, Todd, uh, Pete. Nobody knows. Yes, Schefter said what he said on his podcast, but you can also hear Schefter saying, but we don't know. We don't know what they're going to do at the end. That He'll literally end his thing with all signs point to Jaden Daniels, but then we don't know what they're going to do. Like Nobody knows what they're going to do. It's a good thing. And they've done a good job of masking them. So what do y'all think they they're going to tele- do? <laughs> they have not telegraphed that movie. <laughs> what do y'all think they're going to do? I don't hey, what, know. What do you think? What do you think? If you got a gun put your head right now. You know what? I, I say, let's see what leaks or doesn't leak after the Jaden Daniels and Drake May visits because something's going to get spicy early next week. So next Thursday's pod should probably have some more information. I think it will. Yeah. Right? Perhaps. 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 Uh, Yam says, almost every pro scout, insider, someone working directly for a team is all in on May. Journals, podcasters. Um, skewing towards Daniels, and even then, it's been more recent. Right. I don't think you can lose. Any fencers in the chat? What's up? What's up, Deuce? Fencer right here. Fencer right here. I can't decide, man. I'm happy. I'm a fence. I'm a fencer as a fan. I, I'm. I'm not when it comes to. I'm not a fencer when it comes to hives. I'm anti hive. I'm. I'm not anti either one of these guys or trading back. I think you that you can you win. There win. are paths to win in this draft any way you go. Jimmy says, uh, who are these non-football playing experts? Todd says, has May played for a team outside of Carolina? No, but you know what? Reports came out this week that he turned down $10 million in NIL money to stay at North Carolina. $10 million. I, I think the highest NIL, NIL player was... Uh, I got to find out who... who he turned down ten million to be loyal. That he, right there. So that was a part of the article. A, was loyalty. That, that, that's a character thing that you just true. can't. You can't. I, I don't know. I wouldn't I, have done it. That's the only reason I, I wonder. I wouldn't have done it. That's the only reason I wonder if that's true is because of this. Uh, Paige Van, uh, whatever Van left that went to Louisville and transferred out to uh, LSU. Right? She was offered four hundred thousand. And I Sorry. had money to transfer mm-hmm. to uh, LSU. She told Louisville she would stay if they matched it. Louisville said, we only got 200 for you. She went to LSU. She went from being a really big fish in a small pond and going to Final Four to you seeing the LSU. Still going to Final Four, but a big, a smaller fish in a bigger pond. Yeah. Um, now she's transferring to her next school. And now they're talking, she went from probably being a top five WNBA pick to maybe not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so that that's what – that NIO money will cost you. But I don't know. I I thought Shadir Sanders had the most or Clark. All I listen, I, I don't know like, the I truth, like Dev. I don't know, I don't know the Kentucky, validity. Kentucky was allowed 10 million for their entire team for NIO. Here, here's the article from Scout Scout D NFL. If you follow him on Twitter, it's a good follow. Um, he talks about why his his season went bad. This isn't this isn't a North Carolina blog. This is a this is a scout guy. Um he explains it. I'm not going to explain it, but he ta- he breaks it down analytically uh, why he thinks things happened. And even, you know, I'll try to, sorry, I'll try to make it a little bigger here. Uh, talking about his loyalty is why he, 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 he turned down the NIL money. Yes, um, uh, two Bronny, offers of 5 million yeah, right Bronny there, Dev. James, Bronny James got 6.1. Okay. Here is 4.1. Uh, Livy Doon, the, the, the cheerleader. Uh, 3.2 and then she's not a cheerleader she's a uh, gymnast so dev i don't know the validity in this it says after speaking hey. to various sources i'm told multiple programs were desperate for the north carolina quarterback four yeah. top 10 programs involved making clear money would not be an issue these programs were offering up to seven upwards of seven million with one source confident that a specific program was willing to pay nearly 10 million is that like for him to transfer after this year? Is that what it was? No, this was 22 after his first year at North Carolina. That's crazy. I wonder. I wonder. If that's but he has roots in Charlotte. Remember, he's rooted there. He's rooted. Even Steve Smith, like we were, we're glad you stayed. You know, sort of thing. He's a Carolina guy. Archimedia, but uh, Archimedia, I get like gets like two point something. He only play. Yeah. Probably won't even start next year. That's crazy. 
I mean, uh, the, the denial is really yeah. not going to it, 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 It's yeah, it's 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 made the whole process nuts, but it does give you um, a sense of you know guys you know who you can work with in a loyalty sense and so forth. And if a guy's like, hey, I'll turn down big money to stay where I'm happy. Shit, it's bigger money in college than pro your rookie year. <laughs> if you're getting five to seven million dollars your rookie year, that's more than you're gonna make in the NFL, bro. Well, I mean, uh, okay, so oh, yeah, yeah, that it's, it's it's interesting. It's interesting you say that because it actually kind of ties into what I do for a living, right? So uh, I recruit people to come work for my company. We do a certain type of we do a certain type of work, right? I recruit guys who are in the top of their field in a similar line of work, but because ours has a higher future earning potential. I often am talking and telling guys to take a pay cut now to enter a new path, career path that can earn them more money down the road. Short-term trade-off for like, the long-term benefit. Yeah, yeah, I do a lot of that. So th- th- it's funny because you're seeing that with college now. A lot of these top college players, they're coming to the NFL. They're taking a pay cut because they're going to a different level now. They're going to a, a, a different. It's like going from, in my line of field, going from commercial to industrial. In Drake. this, you're going from college football to professional football. Drake made you're not you're not the top of the you're not the top of the heat in pro football right yeah. at the draft. You Drake are Mays starting a, at the bottom again. Drake made a 1.5 million dollar NIL valuation. Yeah, just to put this in perspective. The salary cap for the WNBA is 1.5 million. Yeah, they make nothing, dude. Right, that's the cap nothing. for the whole team. Yeah, she made four million dollars in NIL money. In yeah, the last year and a half. She made women's more money college than the entire team she's going to go to mm. for uh, women's the, uh, college WBA. women's college basketball is hot right now because of Caitlin Clark. Now the question is, and Angel Reese too. That, yeah, Angel, Angel Reese one point seven. She gets more than Drake May. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but you see, she's also <laughs> basketball is a different basketball is a different thing. She's the number two in her entire field of work, which is women's college basketball. Yeah. She's a, she is she is the solid number two. I think so. She Paige probably Brooker's you might huh? Paige Becker's yeah. that injury killed her value. That knee injury killed her value. Um, relative. I mean, Paige Becker's would be ahead of her if she if Paige had never gotten hurt. And Caitlin Clark's obviously number one. Yeah, definitely. Todd says he's going to drop uh, breaking news. Jaden news on the next podcast. So next Thursday, Todd. Well, we, we well if you got it. the, it's not breaking news if it's a week from now. It's it's really break not. it break it now break uh, it now come on so I do know Sapu, 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 Sapu on our pod so little on. little little tidbit uh, J, uh Jaden was live on Instagram and listen to what Malik Neighbors says about Jaden and look at Jaden's reaction when he says it. I'm gonna tell y'all. What <laughs> you tell us where Jaden's going. Interesting there. If you want to do all that, I'm gonna say where he's going. <laughs> and y'all never gonna believe it. Never gonna believe wow. it. You might uh <laughs> oh, <homie>. wow. <laughs> That's what you wanna do. <laughs> might be going with old homie. And look at the reactions. Like it's almost like, did you just really say that? So, but now people are trying to interpret what does old homie mean? Is it Antonio Pierce from the Raiders? Is it um, the two? They have two wide receivers from LSU on the Patriots, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I, at least one for sure. I forget. There may be a second guy too, but I, I don't know. <laughs> That's what you want to do? Okay. Okay. Part is with old homie. Old homie. No, old homie could be Kingsbury. How you, bro? What linkage does he have to Kingsbury? He doesn't. Is he talking? Oh, what is he trying to say? Jim Daniels is going to uh, San Francisco. To play with he said he. That doesn't make sense, but yeah, I, exactly, Phil. This is what people are people are going all all crazy for. Like, what what does I mean? I'm I'm, I'm just all throwing out mean? various ideas. Hey, Todd, you you're the guy who's the LSU yeah. expert. Tell who's us what old, homie. Tell us what old who's homie means, because there ain't no old homie in Washington. Of Jaden Daniels. So tell us what old homie he there's what is the linkage to Cliff Kingsbury? 
Arizona University. State, whatever. But he was he was the coach of the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, but he was Arizona. And Jaden wasn't even that good. He glowed up when he left and came breaking, to LSU. Breaking news, two guys were in the same state at the same time. <laughs> and that's the argument. Todd, about. Todd is completely ignoring the question that we posed specifically yes. to him. Who is the league neighbors he, talking about? Old homie in the chat. Tell us. Who's who's old homie? Who's old homie? He, he might be going. Todd, uh, old homie. Say first name, last name. All right, and input is old homie. Yes, because right now that, that's, that's, right now you're just talking about Jane Daniels' quick release. Uh, I, I don't know what you're referring to. I mean, you know, they have they have pills to help with quick releases. You know, I don't know what, what you're talking about here. But. Just say that I'll play that again if you guys ever want to watch that later. But I'm looking at yes. uh, Fox Sports Radio right now, and the first article they have is a. Uh, Washington Commanders reportedly want to draft LSU's Jaden Daniels at number two. That's uh, April 11th. Yeah. 24th. That's the first. That's the first thing they have on there uh, that, they, that he wants to date him. Cliff, Kim, Cliff Kingsbury uh, wants him. I just gave Todd an opportunity to drop some knowledge, and he yeah. completely, he's Todd, completely punted uh, it. Adam Peters Todd loves Brandon punted. Ayuk. I don't. I wouldn't Todd, doubt that Adam Peters Todd, loves Brandon Ayuk. You punted. You punted. You were given an opportunity. To look smart, and you punted it. You he's he's keep battling, arguing. He, he's yeah, battling. He, he, Ag I mean, says, like I haven't said his man. name multiple times for him to hear it, but he's yeah. too busy going. Like you said, Schefter saying Daniels, Kevin Sheehan for what his word says, Daniels. Yeah, Kevin Sheehan flip flops because Kevin Sheehan like. He'll sit there and tell you he never he said, liked he said, Carson Wentz. I'm leaning but, now but, toward Daniel, so he did say Yeah, that. but yeah. he also was praising the idea of we could have a much better passing game than Carson Wentz. Right? Yeah, I so I, yeah, Michael I Underwood mean, but, says it Michael Underwood says it good. Folks just gotta stop listening to the media because they know just as much as we do. This new staff doesn't leak like the last one did. Okay, Keishan Boutte. Keishan Boot, Keishan Boutte, Booty, Boutte. Uh I'm probably saying it wrong, but that's who I was talking okay. about in New England. LSU wide receiver. So I don't know if that's who Neighbors was talking about. I don't know. But either way, um, they. It, so what's cool, they've also announced that the – because, you know, not everyone gets an invite to be at the draft. They kind of only want people who they <laughs> know. Are this just drafted. broke. This this news just broke right before um, you went on air. Here are the attendees who've gotten the invite so far for the – at least day one of the draft. Terry and Arnold, Jaden Daniels, Marvin Harrison Jr., J.C. Latham uh, – Latu, ta, Latu, Drake May, Latu, Latu, Kenyon uh, Mitchell, Malik Neighbors, Roma Duns, uh, Darius Robinson, which is kind of a reach. He might be a second rounder. I don't know. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr., <laughs> uh, Dallas Turner, and Caleb Williams. I'm sure there might be a few more coming out over the next, you know, two weeks. But that's who we know so far. Uh, interesting. Just thought we'd break that here while on the podcast because, you know, why not? There you go. Um, so a couple more comments here, and we get to the next uh, third helmet rule that you guys may or may not know about. Uh, Cody says, none of these dudes predicting which quarterback is going to be taken has the right more than the half. That's right. Tommy says, we do people say how when talking about May. If you, if you What if he went to Oregon? Yeah, it's kind of a I – don't, I don't like comparison to the, 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 the same players. But. I asked uh, – I asked, uh... I asked uh, co-pilot, Microsoft co-pilot, uh, which quarterback they prefer. Their first one was Drake May, second Jane Daniels, third Jake. That's AI fitness. Ooh. And, AI says, and they give they give a lengthy explanation as to why for each one. So, um, read it all. Read off the read off the one right, for uh, Drake May. Drake May, ESPN predicts North Carolina Tar Heels quarterback Drake May will be watching the starter in 2024, replacing Sam Howell. Who also played in North Carolina, May is predicted as one of the top picks in the 24 draft. Former Commanders quarterback Robert Griffin III believes that May has all the tools to be needed uh, to be a franchise quarterback. Griffin emphasizes May's trail traits and upside, which, when faced with adversity, May's mental toughness and love for the game make him an intriguing prospect. What? Yeah. That's a pretty short category. Uh, yeah. For Jaden uh, Daniels, says ESPN colleague. Football analyst and national champion winning quarterback Greg McElroy thinks 
The commander should take Jane Daniels. Daniels is a signal caller from the University of San Carlos. <laughs> provides stability and playmaking ability at the quarterback position. Okay. Todd said three LSU players in the top fifteen. I do not see Brian Thomas in the top fifteen. Jaden, Jaden, and uh, that's about four receivers. Might go neighbors. I don't see Thomas going. Yeah, top just 15, I think I think Thomas the, just it's too much competition there. Harrison. First round, I for sure. I just Harrison, think he's neighbors towards the, towards twenty twenty to probably what's the what's the fast dude's name again? That guy. Yeah. Um, the luck says, you know what Hal and May don't have in common that Daniels and Hal do is pressure to sack rate. So that's, so people talk about stats that translate from college up to NFL and pressure to sack rate is one of them. And so is accuracy. So Sam, even in college had a lot of sacks. He stepped into sacks and that's one of the, one of the things that uh, is kind of getting overlooked with Jaden is his pressure to sack ratio is, is pretty high. Um, but I don't know if, if that will truly translate. There's another stat. I got to find it. Um, wish I could show you guys. It, it lines up um, Caleb, Drake, and Jaden, all these stats. And Jaden just, blow, <laughs> just blows all these cats out the water. I got to find it uh, if I can. But um, so, okay. So the third third um, helmet rule uh, Dev Deluxe, is anyone having trouble hearing Dev? When you talk, Dev, I'm only hearing it out of one ear. I don't know if I'm crazy. I hear my book. You hear him out of both? Okay, I only hear out of... You got your shit on stereo? Is that oh, better? Yep, that's better. Whatever you I just had, did fixed it. I don't know what well, you did. I had it on... I, I got a, a Volt. Um, you had it on mono? No, I have a very new... Oh. This one of the nice ones. Turn your 276. gain up. Turn your gain up just to... 276. There you go. There, there you go. we go. 276 Volt, which is nice. Has a built-in... Oh, and you, you turned it back down. You went back down. Turn it back up again, Dev. All right, man. Is that better? Yes. Very Beautiful. Good. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, the third helmet rule. Not, not sure if you guys are tracking, but the NFL just allowed uh, NFL teams to use a third helmet, third alternate helmet design um, yeah. after they just updated the uniform policy. And so there's a right, right away, there's all of these people on um, Twitter, all these people, you know, trying to do the. Um, oops, sorry, guys the mock-ups and there's this guy gonzo if you follow our, our twitter account i posted on twitter but i'm going to show it here real quick he did a really cool mock-up he's a graphic designer and he he did a mock-up of these these different helmets and i just want to get your guys opinion real quick which which one you guys think is actually cool if if these i know these are all fake right but if we get an opportunity to to choose one of these helmets, which which ones would you guys like the best? So here, just just take a look here. And for those in the chat, shout out to Chris Bryant, shared this from uh, uh, Gonzo did this, but here is the here is the photograph right one? there. You don't like any uh, of them. black like helmet. Here is the first I like, one. I like the camouflage in the middle of it. Here is the second one. Here is the third one. The black and that's kind of a, like a salute to service one. And then here's the fourth one, also like a salute to service one. Does any of these four helmets resonate with any of you guys? That that, that black one with the camouflage. You like it, Phil? I like uh, it. With, I like the, with the all with the all black uni, but that would be a that would definitely be a salute to service one. I yeah. don't mind I don't mind the gold helmet in the top right. Um, I tweak it a little bit as far as colors go. I think I make the helmet a little bit brighter. What do you I wear that? that? What do you wear that with though? The the maroon, the all burgundy, the all -burgundy the black, jersey, all burgundy. Jersey. So like a matte, a matte gold versus instead of the matte burgundy. I guess it's the yeah. inverse. Remember the visor was red and the straps were red. I really yeah. Like the yellow one. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. I don't, I don't like any one of them, honestly, though. I do like the fact that the yellow one doesn't have trim around the W. I kind of like that aspect of it. Yeah. Uh, I don't really like the masking on the uh, camouflage on the colored helmets. I, I mean, honestly, I just like the helmets as they are now in real life. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't like. I don't mind them either. I mean, what's this? Yeah. Our helmets that we our helmets that we have now are super tight. Like you can yeah. hate you can hate on the uniforms. I, I don't like. The I can color, understand though. some of the arguments, but the helmet themselves. Yeah, um, yeah, with the with the uh, the gradient matte finish, it's too nice. Yeah, I wish they get that. I wish they get that chrome uh, red like Louisville has though. That would be dark. Western Western has it too. They got like a chrome yeah. red. I wish they'd do one of those. But you know, 
I don't mind. I don't mind the the current helmet. I wish they would change the logo though. In a way, I I wish that's one thing he would do is get that funky ass W off there. At least get something different. Yeah. Or nothing. Um, Blake the board. Uh, thanks for watching on Facebook. Uh, flip over to YouTube at the top of this uh, link or um, give Streamer permission. But thank you for the thank you for the comment. Um, uh, he says that uh, black. He likes the black. Ryan says the first two. That's what she said. Yeah. Uh, Yam says gloss black sucks dicks just like the ones we already have. I Man, That's Yam does not said. like our helmets. I like the matte burgundy, man. Uh, Tommy likes the all white one with all white UDs. That would be like a third. Like what do they the, call that? The um, white I don't out? like the number. I don't like the number. I don't like the number, I don't like the number, the number either. either. I, I, I like, like the number on there. I wanted, I wanted the leather, the leathery ones back, man. Yeah. Oh, I don't like those, man. I'm not a fan it of those looks- either. Like a it, dirty it, burgundy, it, dirty gold, whatever. It feels brown, too much like it, it feels mask. too much like uh, Florida State. I hate Florida State. Florida yeah. State took Washington's helmets, man. Tia likes the third and fourth helmet. I can do white too. Okay. Everyone, of course, Sam saying uh, Todd Samuel saying May's going to slide out of the top ten. But there is one comment I do want to point out that Amir said earlier. Um. Where did it go? Where did it go? He just said that Penix and JJ are going to take it for me. He said, take away JD's weapons and neighbors, neighbors and Thomas. And his passing stats are 79 for 170, 1,066 yards and nine touchdowns. Definitely utilized weapons, but he was mainly throwing to them. That's it. And then, so Jimmy, Jimmy transitions to my, my next sharing with you guys. Didn't Robert Griffin say they should take Jaden Daniels? Yeah, he did. The answer is yes. I'm going to quickly show you, you know, we, we've – Robert, Robert's been flip-flopping too. You know, if you remember last week we showed a clip of him saying um, Drake May is a good quarterback, but today he comes out and flips. So Daniels he- is better for Washington than Drake May. I know it's a huge debate on social media. Ah, there you Washington go, Robert. As Scary Terry at wide receiver along with Jahan Dotson. At running back, they got Austin Eckler and Brian Robinson. This team can be in a win-now mode. I wouldn't say Super Bowl contender, but definitely a playoff contender. That's the cherry on the top for me as to why the commander should pick Jaden Daniels over Drake May. It's the experience. And when you take that experience and you look at the play style, both athletic, both like to drive the football down the field, but one of them was the most explosive passer and runner in all of college football last year and won the Heisman Trophy. But when you look at it and you actually watch all the tape, you see how Jaden Daniels has one of the best deep balls in all of college football. You see how Jaden Daniels reads and processes pre and post snap better than almost anyone in college football. And I understand why they would take that route and go with him. There you go. So you see, he's you see, but he's thinking as in this is gonna be a quick turnaround. Yes. I don't I don't have the roster optimism for 2024 that he does. Right. And that's why I've said, if you think you can win now, then Jaden's your guy. If you're looking to develop three to five years out, then Drake May is your guy. Yeah. This is the graphic I was trying to show you guys earlier. So I, I'll post this on our command this account later. But it's, it aligns Caleb, Drake, and, J, and Jaden Daniels. Um, Todd doesn't like PFF, but Todd, these are all PFF he, he signs grades. PFF all the time, too. So. Um, and these PFF grades has Jaden Daniels favorable. So I'm guessing you like PFF now. Uh, so just, just throwing <laughs> that out there. Uh, the, it goes through yards per attempt, quarterback rating, adjusting completion percentage, pa- PFF passing grades, PFF pressure, PFF no pressure, PFF rushing, big time throws. Um, and the only thing that you that I really can take away from this is that Caleb Williams, according to these stats, is not as good as we thought. And these stats right here that PFF produced leans more towards Jaden Daniels as being the best quarterback. So statistics are used for whatever argument you want to make. And someone clearly put this graphic together to make an argument that Jaden Daniels is the best quarterback coming out in this draft. So thought I'd yeah, throw that out there. That, thought I'd throw that, that out there. Next, next to the last one. Okay, so there's a comment in here from um, Jimmy Lee Patterson. He says, damn, Phil, three to four years. Well, you can't be short-sighted, right? If we're going to do a complete recalibration of this team, you can't just think for next year, right? So when when I say 
win now, Jaden, win <laughs> down the road. Great. That that's <laughs> so funny. <laughs> read it, Phil. Go ahead, read it. <laughs> Says Jaden got to eat a gold corral every day and put on some more weight. <laughs> he's good. He needs to hit the he's at the, the the carb station and the and the meat carving station. Get two of them steaks. Um, gold corral so every good. day, every day. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is, is that I think coming out of college, Jaden Daniels is the more polished and finished product. Absolutely. But He's got five years of experience three, too. But in three years, I think there's a better possibility that Drake May is the better quarterback. And if yeah. you're looking to draft your franchise guy, you got to be thinking, we're going to bring this guy in, he'll get his fifth year option, and then we're going to sign him to another contract after that. That's where the big money's going to be. So you got to think. Who in five years are you more likely to want to give a basically the NFL's equivalent of a max contract to? Who's going to be that guy? Drake May, I think, has a higher ceiling than Jane Daniels. Lower floor, higher ceiling. So you're going to get more of a sure thing with Jane Daniels, but I think that you're also not going to have potentially as great a quarterback with Jane as you would with, with, with Drake May. So that's yeah. where you, you got to see. Because here's the weird thing. Because considering play styles, because Drake May is a little more traditional than Jane Daniels, but Jane Daniels is actually the safer pick. Yeah. Believe it or not. He is the safe pick. But he's not the biggest. He, he's not the one with the highest uh, reward. And this is Drake what May is I a think higher Tim, risk, high reward. I pick. think Tim's kind of saying what you're saying to ex players and current coach will say JD because they're looking at what they can do now. Scouts are looking at the ceiling and how likely a player player will reach it. Uh, Michael says Jaden been in school for five years, so yes, he got the upper hand on stats, and that's that's the predicament, right? Jaden or uh, Drake May is the only person to accumulate nine thousand yards like in two seasons in FBS history. Jaden Daniels didn't do that. Drake May did it. Jaden Daniels didn't do it. Um, so that's, that's one of the things that I think people keep clamoring to. And once again, we can argue about this all day. We truly, truly can. Um, it's, it's a fun argument when, when you start throwing in these new perspectives on things, by the way, um, apparently now I'm a Jaden fan, according to Todd, I was <laughs> never, I was never not a fan of Jaden Daniels, the man and the player. Yes, and you made Philly use a double negative. You made Philly use a double negative, which he doesn't do. So you know he's 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 me serious about it. Um, I really mean it. Drake May. I'll read this right here. May is the only FBS quarterback to accumulate over nine thousand yards of total offense over the last two seasons. Four thousand yards. Yeah, he's in the ACC, year. bro. Five thousand yards last year. He's playing against dudes that are accountants this week. They just start their new. But he did it as a true freshman and a true sophomore. Still, he did ACC. Okay, my comment is, what did Jaden do when he was at ASU in his first two years at ASU? He didn't throw for nine. He didn't do nine thousand yards. That's see that you can take that argument and use the same. You see what I'm saying? It's not. I don't think it's a bad argument. Well, we're gonna make an argument for Daniels on this show. You know <laughs> hey, I would love Jaden Daniels. You know, what I'm like I, I don't care if we draft Jaden Daniels. It's a win-win for me, man. I, I am fantastic. Well, uh, Utah, the Knicks are the third seed. They can get that number two seed. In the books. <laughs> Utah, I think Utah flipped over from Twitter. Thank you for joining Utah. Um, sorry, I couldn't get you to you earlier, bro. Says my only question on the development. It feels like we're for sure with Jaden Daniels now, but it'll take three plus years to win with May. Do we gamble on that with this number two pick? Some coaches don't uh, – now, That's a, uh, will a coach be willing to, to give up three years, sacrifice three years to win? That's what Jay Gruden was talking about. Why Jay Gruden said, as a coach, I would go with Jay because he gives me the highest chance to win now. But if Adam Peters says, listen, Dan Quinn, your job is safe. We're not going to fire you in two years because – Jay Gruden you know what I mean? take, Jay, Jay Gruden took <laughs> oh, whoever yeah. could make him look good. Okay. <laughs> So he could just go to the bar. Just so he could go to the bar. I was waiting. And for, not to worry. <laughs> waiting for Phil to pounce on that one. There you go. Where you at, Phil? No, La Quinta Inn? I, yes. Are you for real? How did you know? I can just tell by the background. It, it, this is this actually used to be in a loft. I can tell by the way the room's set up. Huh. See, That's funny. I am at a La Quinta. 
Um, the last major topic I want to talk about is the new kickoff rule. We didn't get to talk about it last week. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the, the NFL is adopting the XFL's kickoff rules. And so here's a quick, quick clip of what it will look like, uh, thanks to Adam Schefter. And what you notice is that the kicker is kicking from the 30. You guys are going to get confused. If you look at the offense, or excuse me, I guess you can call it the special teams folks, they're all the way up at the other 35. What, what, is, what is that official position again, Steve? The what? The what? what? What is the official position that the guys should be looking at? The special teams folks? The special teams, <laughs> fo- special teams folks. <laughs> uh, they're five yards apart, but they cannot move until the ball is caught. And so what this means is the kickoff returns are back. That's the cool part. We're gonna the kickoff returns are gonna be great again. So just watch this. It's ten seconds. Um, I love kick, it. I love the, this. Is the kicker kicks? Nothing else. We got this. Yeah, they run back and block. So now and kickers will have a or returners will have a chance to return the ball. That's pretty cool. I it. I, thank we'll watch God. one more time. You can put it's good. I'm not. There too, by the way. I mean, yeah, where's where's Bra- where's they, Brandon Banks when you Mr. need him, right? Could you, could Mr. You, Titan, could you Mr. Titan is in the chat. Mr. Titan is in the chat. Can you kick it on the ground? Can you kick it like right behind the line? I don't know how it works for onsides. I I really no. Don't. You have to you have to announce an onside kick. There you go. So then you probably line up in the more traditional. But I guess the you, traditional. Yeah, not an onside kick, just like not back to the guy. Like a, like a squib kick. Yeah. Is it has you to can't... land. No, the ball. The kickoff has to land between twenty and the goal line. What if it oh, does? Some more squib kicks. Then, then the opposing team gets the ball on the thirty. Huh? Yeah, you can't. There you, you go. Can't. I would just work kicking that motherfucker uh, inside the thirty. Get the ball on the thirty and keep running back. I'm happy to see kickoffs again, just straight up. What's up, Mister Titan? Like Phil said, he's in the chat. Join us. What's up, boys? He's not really bothered by the kickoff. Uh, we let's love get it. Some return touchdowns back. Yes, the, we, we love it. We love back. it. We had some pretty good. Hey. Uh, it means that guys like it, it means like guys, that we get that back because you know, we no fair catches, second, no, yeah, fair catches. no fair catches. We thought that we thought that the days of you guys know, then as Washington fans, we we had guys like Brian Mitchell. Before that, it was um, uh, 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 it was Herb Mulkey, and there was uh, who's the guy? Jesus, uh, uh, Mike Nelms. You know, we've had a history of great kick returners. Um, for this te- for this franchise, way before the 2000s, and then we've always been searching for a good kick returner since. Um, yeah. We have Brandon Banks; <laughs> he was fun. Yeah. Um, Even Stanley. Sims was okay, but he, he couldn't feel the punt. But he, when he yeah. did, Todd makes a good point. Xavier Worthy on kickoffs. Now that's a, Todd. That's a, a fantastic point. I will give you credit. Um, Shy Guns. Shy Guns joining us. He says, don't forget my cousin is joining us on draft day too. He's a Bears fan. I didn't know you were joining us on draft day. He's Shy Guns is going to join us on draft day? Dev? Did you yeah, hand yeah, out an yeah. invite? Yeah, I, we talked about <laughs> Could it. Could you tell us next time? We feel so. <laughs> oh, All right. The, whole conversation. the more the merrier. Did we? <laughs> yeah, it was like way back in the chat. I, I, I think he, I I, I, be, I barely I remember it now, but I do remember it. It was it was during the pod. Yeah. Always welcome, um, Mr. Titan says. Unfortunately, the Titans have had a great returner since Pac-Man Jones. Hey, but you did have Frank Wycheck on a great kickoff. You're yes, you're welcome on the great. What do they call that play? The, there's the Music a, City Miracle. Music City Miracle. There you go. Pass, I couldn't couldn't quite remember. <laughs> Step said it was a forward pass, Mr. Titan. For sure. Forward pass. There you go. Tim is thanking AP hot. in advance for selecting Drake May. Man. Well, I'm going with the rollout music here, fellas. Uh, uh, shout out to OJ Simpson. Rest in peace. He died today. Yes. Rest in peace, OJ. Uh, passed away from prostate cancer. Yards, 876. I'm not about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not about to say rest in peace, though. OJ hey man, not, hey, you, you go through the you go through the court system, man, and they say you're not guilty. You're not guilty, bro. Nah, I know mean, that I'm, civil I'm, trial I'm, said he was guilty. I mean, you yeah. don't have to have but like thirty percent proof in civil trial. You can just get you can go to you can get guilty civil trial for circumstantial evidence, bro. I mean, uh, I, I mean, I, I'm not. I watched a bunch of documentaries on like what my theories would be, but hey, man, this dude's dead. He paid his debt. Uh, he went through the trial system, double jeopardy, which is the hardest thing for niggas to get off on. Yeah. You know, maybe if the prosecution doesn't like fumble, 
uh, you know, handle evidence with their bare hands or take evidence to the nigga's house, maybe they catch him. You know what I'm saying? But hey, if not, Talk to niggas, you know, tell shit. Time with the comment. Rest in peace, OJ. He made Caitlyn Jenner mad. Yeah. Well, I mean, Who you got to think, OJ. Oh, you got to think that one of his stepdaughters, OJ's is her daddy. Shut up, man. Yeah. <laughs> I I would if it came out that Chloe that Chloe Kardashian is OJ's kid, I would not be surprised. Oh my goodness. Yam said, "Stop looking at the SEC and downplaying other conferences. They don't matter as much as y'all think." Yeah, Jaden was one and three in the SEC too, so take that for what it's worth. Yeah, but he bought. Although he did he did ball out he did ball out in two of those four total games, being one and three, but. All good. Ben Harlow, thank you for tuning in. Better late than never, man. We we appreciate you, bro. We appreciate you. Um, Deluxe says, JD, uh, Jane Daniels struggle with uh, PTS, the future NFL lineman in front. PTS, that's uh, pressure to sack, I think, ratio. Yes. Uh, he also doesn't throw over the middle very much. I think that's been debunked a little bit. I think a little bit. Not Somewhat. Fully. Somewhat. Somewhat. Not as bad as people make it think. Just like May's footwork isn't as bad as a lot of people think it is, but... Once again, as a fencer, this is what I do, right? I, I play to cater to cater to my, only, my my problem. My my biggest problem with Jane Daniels is his propensity to run when he's got open receivers downfield. Yeah, I don't I don't know if that's just he's just that's his 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 brain functions that way, or if it's a hot dogging thing. I'm going to get these yards myself. I don't know what it yeah. is, but that that's something that hopefully, if we do draft him, they can coach out of. Yeah, look look to make the pass instead of looking to run. Uh, Yam says, here's the thing with OJ. He died with his family present. He's still a dad, a grandfather, and had people who still loved him. Regardless of anything else, respect his family. And you never want to see anyone go out with, you know, the C word. Hitler died next to his wife. Okay. Man, hold on, okay, stop man. it. You know, Hitler did. No one has ever had proof Hitler got Hitler yes. dead. No, <laughs> went, Jesus, here we he go. No one's ever proved that. Look, they, got, they, got a, they got a skull. They got a skull. There's not been one American scientist confirmed that skull was his. Actually, one uh, European one did, and they said it was a woman, DNA-wise. No one's ever yeah. seen a dead body of Hitler. No one has ever seen that, by the way. Yeah. Except a Russian and two Germans. And they all and they and they can't be trusted. You know what yeah, I'm saying? There's no one seen that, bro. <laughs> I'm just saying, no one's seen Hitler's body, bro. Uh, Mondre Hollywood, thank you for joining us. We're winding Just down. Say says, uh, I heard JD wants to play for the Patriots or Raiders. We talked about that earlier, where we showed the in- Instagram live video of uh, Malik Neighbors talking smack about revealing where JD wants to play at or will play at. People don't know he's going to play with old homie. If that's going to be Antonio Pierce or uh, Butte up in New England. Nobody knows, man. Nobody yeah, knows. Just like no one knows where if Hitler got killed. No one's seen Yeah. Him. <laughs> Yeah, Michael, Michael Under was right. Him and Jimmy are, are having big boy talk in the chat. Um, it's all love here, man. We we love everybody. Jimmy, uh, Michael. We don't love that guy, but <laughs> we, it's all good, man. We, we are we are grown adults here, and we Damn. are fans. We are passionate. Uh, we love. Usually, we love, we love usually, it's people wanting to fight me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, usually, uh, usually that's fit. everybody wants to fight me. <laughs> I get it. I get it. You you go to jail. You 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 swing on the the biggest biggest guy in the yard, right? Yeah. You know, I, I get that. You know, and I'm the loudest mouth on the podcast, so yeah. I, I get it. Amir says Georgia and Alabama are not the end all be all. Are they amazing schools? Absolutely. They're not everything. And Michigan would say, "Look at us. <laughs> Look at us. SEC. Suck our balls." That's what Michigan would like to say. Um, yeah, you know, it's unfortunate SEC. as a Penn State yeah, fan. Oh. It's very unfortunate. At least, hey, a broken clock's right at least twice a day, bro. Hey, that's true. I told you the conspiracy theory with the uh, college football preseason rankings, anyway. So we'll see. When you're already when you're already stacked ahead of the preseason, it's kind of hard to come down from the preseason rankings. Like you know, what's I, not, you know what's ranked number one right now for it's football. Seven. <laughs> 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 I need to watch. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's get some shout outs here. You guys have any any shout outs or closing words? Uh Phil, we'll start with you. Um shout out to the city of Pittsburgh and well Pittsburgh. the outlining 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 uh suburbs where I am the currently Yenzers. located. The Yenzers. Um, yeah. So Penn, shout Penn State out needs to, a quarterback. Shout out to them. Penn State needs a quarterback. Penn State needs a, a head coach who can coach on game day. They haven't had one since Christian Hackenberg, and he wasn't even that good. <laughs> no. Blair Thomas. Good. Blair Thomas is a Penn, Penn State great. He's a running back, yes. I know. 
Penn great. State Penn State gives you great running backs. Yeah. That all get hurt in the NFL. But you know, um, you know, Penn State hasn't had a great quarterback since Kurt Kerry Collins, okay? Yeah. Todd says, shout out to Jaden for being the best quarterback in the draft. There you go. That's right, Todd. Tell him. Black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dev, you need any, any parting words? Uh, again. Go watch X-Men 97. X-Men 97. <laughs> OJ Simpson. Uh, notable day. Hey, Gambit got killed the same day as OJ Simpson, bro. Died. Uh, you remember? <laughs> I ruined it. Dev just handed out the spoilers hey, sorry. at this point. But. That's all I'd say about that. <laughs> I don't else. Thank you to everyone who tuned in to the chat. Too many, too many of y'all listen. Um, thank you so much. If uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that like button. We would greatly appreciate it if you did. Y'all watch um, Fallout, by the way? No. I have not yet. I don't think I'm watching tonight. Yeah, not sure. Michael says, great show as usual, fellas. Phil, I got your back, big guy. <laughs> Jimmy, nobody's in their feelings, bro. I think Michael's Michael's big boy. He's good, man. It's all it's all love. It's all gravy here, man. Um, Fallout is dope. I've heard Fallout is dope. What network is that on? Where can I watch Fallout? Oh, I'll tell you. I think it's on Prime. I don't want to. I think I have five it more. Sounds like, sounds it's, like on Prime. Prime. it's on Prime. It's on the front screen. Okay, Prime. I think I got five more of Shogun to watch, and then man, the last episode of Shogun. The, yeah, the don't don't last, Dev, don't ruin it. That. Don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. Before last, man. It's just getting just getting good. Um, Todd said that J-, J-, Cole, J. Cole got to come out with another disc record. Why people? Hey, they said no, he don't. He's done. They said that. Uh, they said that. Uh, what's his name? Really, someone tonight at midnight? Drake on. Uh, on I uh, heard, man. I heard, boy, man. I don't know that Metro and uh, that Metro album is still pretty good, man. That's what I've been cranking a lot lately. Man, the, J. Cole's the Metro album is pretty good, man. But it is pretty is, good. The thing about him, good. everyone knew that nigga was a hippie, bro. You knew out of all three of these dudes, he's a hippie. He's not that petty. And these guys got energy for being petty. You remember what Drake did? Because uh, J. Cole's an adult. That's why. Man, no, it's not that, man. You knew. I, w- I mean. He ain't into that J. stuff. Cole, J. Cole, J. Cole is. Worse. This nigga's going to go ahead. J. J. Cole, now. look, look. And I don't, I don't mean this as a diss. But J. Cole is basically 2024 Saul Williams at this point. Yeah. He does grow me. He's, he's a poet. He's a poet. Yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a hippie. He's, he's not a. a <laughs> and, 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 I, and I told you that before, man. I said, dude, he's he's and he lied outright, lied. Like obviously, you said that Kendrick Lamar's albums weren't good when they were. Nigga won like fifteen yeah. Grammys and some ignorant shit. Yeah, bro, you know, yeah. like you know, it's like you can't even say his records are bad. It's like it's not a good look for J Cole. J Cole can probably, in my opinion, a better MC than those guys. In my yeah. opinion, J Cole is the better MC out of those three. In my opinion, yeah. I just think in that format where you're battling those kind right. of guys that don't mind to get petty. You're gonna lose that, man. You're not gonna beat those guys. Oh, just like you just. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, uh, Michael, we are going live on draft day. We'll be we will be live um, with Todd Samuel with Todd Samuel for the entire first round. So come check us out two weeks from now, Thursday, uh, we will be live. And you know what? The first round is going to be so long. If any of you guys want to jump in and join us, you'll be more than welcome to jump in too. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll Especially be, after we make we'll our be, pick. We'll be going we'll the whole be, time. We'll be, we'll be, there'll be people cycling in and out. Like we a, Bella, a Bella Danger is going to be there too, guys. A Bella Danger. Uh, adult film star, A Bella Danger? All right, something's wrong with Dev. <laughs> Someone does not want Dev to be on here. Uh, for sure, I, it's the, not me. It is not me. The NSA, the NSA my hands, my hands are right here. That is not me. The, the NSA get, is getting you, Dev. You did Every it. time the Dev says something, uh, I don't know. By the way, it's, by the way, um, here's here's the thing. All right, quick shout out. I got a little bit of a, uh, of a, an issue with uh, YouTube because I probably should be saying since I'm on YouTube, but. YouTube took down a really good documentary on a um, on a, an internet celebrity who recently overdosed and died, and it came out yesterday. And today, it was, and it got like four hundred thousand views, and then it took it down and demonetized it and everything. Hopefully, it put it back up. If you all don't know, it's about the guy uh, Too Mad who uh, he OD'd back in February. It it was uh, compelling watch. The end at the end really does uh, does get you. <laughs> um, but 
if you haven't, if you get a chance, you see there's there's a, there's a documentary on the guy that's out, and for no reason, YouTube took it down. And it's like, why? Why are we taking down great content and we leave some of the other crap you find on YouTube up? So I think that was kind of irresponsible. YouTube, do better, please. Yeah, YouTube. Oh no, I'm talking about what the fuck. Uh, it's just YouTube just messing with content. Like it doesn't affect us because we talk about sports, but you know, talking about like you know controversial figures leave it up you know let, let, it's how people learn when people get entertained and they get edutainment are you not you entertained so, just something that i saw today and i was like that's this that's some bullshit. ag said the ghost of oj playing with the feed dev he's, he's getting you man you would he's think getting... he'd be getting me after what i said <laughs> <laughs> right, we said we were only going to go for 45 minutes to an hour we went in 90 minutes Oops. just because that's what we do man we love you guys you guys are great you guys keep this going man every time we think we're not going to have enough content to talk about the chat just friggin fire and y'all just y'all the best man we love you guys appreciate it appreciate it appreciate it all right we're going to get on out of here um one last comment uh, Yam says back when COVID was first hit in the u.s anyone made a video last year to start talking about it was demonetized that's right that is right. It didn't talk about any of that. That's the weird thing. But yeah, anyway. It's crazy. Yep. All right. We're going to get out of here. Uh, thank you so much for, for all, you, all you do. You can catch us on any of your um, podcast, uh, audio podcast platforms where you get it. Apple, Google, Spotify. We are there. iHeart, Odyssey. You can you can Google command this. You can catch us on the replay tomorrow on your way to work, sitting at your computer. You can you know, re-listen to this, giving yourself shout outs. And uh, always, always on YouTube as well. So please like, share, subscribe, spread the word. I'd uh, love to get more people in here. And um, we appreciate everything you guys do. So uh, with that, we're going to sign off. As always, peace and hail. We out.